Bob, today you're not only one of the longest serving secretaries of defense in American history, but it is also clear that you've been one of the best. When the fight against Al Qaeda and our efforts in Afghanistan needed new focus, Bob Gates helped us devise the strategy that has finally put Al Qaeda on a path to defeat and ensures that Afghanistan never again becomes a source for attacks against our nation. Well, that was President Obama in June of 2011 talking about uh, his former defense secretary, Bob Gates. Uh, Gates has a new book out, Duty, in which uh, there's some harsh criticism of the president's leadership and his commitment to the Afghanistan war he was just talking about, saying that in 2010, the president had essentially concluded, uh, quote, uh, he doesn't believe in his own strategy and doesn't consider the war to be his. For him, it's all about getting out. And then there's a, a moment in where he questions, according to Gates, the president questions uh, the military folks and saying that uh, they may be trying to game uh, the president and trying to leak things on him to slow down the release, uh, the pullback of troops from Afghanistan and from Iraq. Quote, I was pretty upset myself. I thought implicitly accusing David Petraeus, the commander, of gaming him in front of 30 people in the Situation Room was inappropriate, not to mention highly disrespectful of Petraeus. As I sat there, I thought the president doesn't trust his commander, can't stand Afghan President Hamid Karzai, doesn't believe in his own strategy, and doesn't consider the war to be his. Is. For him, it's all about getting out. That was the full statement there. Let's bring in our panel. Nina Easton, columnist for Fortune magazine. Kirsten Powers, columnist for The Daily Beast. And syndicated columnist, Charles Krauthammer. Charles. Well, that last statement was made about a meeting that occurred on the 3rd of March, 2010. That's three months after Obama announced the surge in Afghanistan. So think about this. You're the Secretary of Defense. Here's a president. He's sending 30,000 more troops into battle. And three months later, Secretary of Defense realizes that Obama doesn't believe in the surge or believe in the war or believe in his own actions. He doesn't believe in Petraeus. He hates the Karzai. He thinks the war isn't his. How can a commander in chief in good uh, conscience do that? I remember saying here on the night of the president's speech in which he announced the surge and then immediately announced the withdrawal. And then for the four years ever since, he never spoke to explain to the American people why the war, why the surge was important. He now has the lowest p public approval of any war in modern history because it had no leadership. But I think this is a shocking revelation. I assumed that he didn't believe in his war from his own actions. But here is from somebody sitting with the president three months in. And I do think this is an indictment of the president that rises above everything else he's done in his presidency. Well, here's another one, Nina. Uh, this has to do with Gates talking about a private conversation between Hillary Clinton and President Obama, um, in which he says, quote, Hillary told the president that her opposition to the 2007 surge in Iraq had been political because she was facing him in the Iowa primary, Iowa caucuses. The president conceded vaguely that he, that opposition to the Iraq surge had been political. To hear the two of them making these admissions and in front of me was as surprising as it was dismaying. Yeah, that was uh, to portray these two or to see these two as the political animals that they are, um, I think was quite shocking to somebody like Defense Secretary Gates. And of course, this is a book, we've seen all of these tell-all um, memoirs. I don't think I would want to be running a White House with all of this going on. That said, this is coming from Gates, um, and it does carry a substantial weight. And I think it also tracks very much what somebody like Avali Nasser, the former State Department official, when he wrote his book, uh, said, which is that this, this president's very uncomfortable with uh, being the n world's number one military power and in, uncomfortable using that power. It also tracks in saying that there was an inexperienced White House staff that very much wanted to meddle with, and in Vali Nasser's case, the State Department, but in this case, um, uh, lack of respect for the military. I think the, the important thing is going forward, though, in Afghanistan. Um, we have a, a Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator John McCain just back from Afghanistan, military people there telling them that you need between nine and 13 troops to keep the place from falling apart. Uh, nine to 13,000 troops. 
if you know if, if this president doesn't have his heart in protecting the gains that have been made, what is going to happen in Afghanistan? In Iraq, we have zero troops, and guess what? Al Qaeda is taking over. Uh, that's going to become a national security threat to this country. Listen, we saw, and we've talked about this here before, Kirsten, the status of forces agreement in Iraq, uh, all of this going back and forth and how they wanted it to happen, and then the time ran out and it just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It seems that this is shaping up to be something similar in Afghanistan, or at least potentially, uh, as this negotiation is still going on. Well, I just have to say, the idea that this is a president who doesn't like to use the military, if he doesn't like, like the military, he uses the military an awful lot. I mean, he's, he's been quite aggressive, actually. Yeah, well, here's what Gates of, says uh, about it. He says about suspicion of the military. Yeah. All too early in the Obama administration, suspicion and distrust of senior military officers by senior White House officials, including the president and the vice president, became a big problem for me as I tried to manage the relationship between the commander-in-chief and his military yeah, and leaders. And it's hard to know without actually reading the book, I mean, he's characterizing something. How do we know that it was mistrust of them or if it was just that the president was thinking he has made his, his it clear that the Afghanistan was a priority? I think that was a mistake. I don't think he should have ever done the surge in the first place, but maybe he was conflicted about it. Maybe he, that would be a reasonable thing for the president to be feeling, I think, to be thinking, is this the right thing to do? Are we, you know, just throwing good after bad and are we just going to get into a, a worse situation? So. Gates is characterizing that. Uh, you know, I think there are at least two sides of this story, and um, you know, and this is Gates' side of the story. But I, I think the president had every reason to be skeptical. Does this do damage also, to this White House? Number one, to Hillary Clinton in 2016. Helpful, number two, it's not helpful to the White House. But at the same time, I think him complaining about how centralized the White House was and involved shows that he didn't like the kind of oversight that he was getting. I would argue that you know the Bush administration probably could have been a little more engaged. So I think this can cut both ways. Now, the Obama administration will push back against this. And look, I think the conversation that if, if, if Hillary and Obama had that conversation in front of Gates, of course that's damaging. I do want to read the uh, response from the NSC, or at least part of it. The president welcomes differences of views among his national security team, which broaden his options and enhance our policies. The president wishes Secretary Gates well as he recovers from his recent injury and discusses his book. Um, he also goes on to defend Vice President Biden. Um, Gates in the book says Biden has been on the wrong side of, uh, of pretty much every national security issue. Well, Gates is right about that. But, I mean, the real issue is how can a president commit troops if his heart isn't in it when he knows that Americans are going to die? Three of the four out of every four Americans who's died in Afghanistan has done so under the command and orders of Barack Obama. And look, the problem isn't that a president makes mistakes. Bush made horrible mistakes uh, in Iraq. Uh, Reagan made a terrible mistake in Lebanon. Lincoln made years of mistakes until he found his uh, general. But it's, if, you, if you order something, if you order a, a mission and your heart isn't in the mission, it's a question of conscience here. And I think the, the president's lack of interest in Afghanistan is shown by the fact that even now, we were talking about what's happening on the ground, he has not spoken with Karzai since July, when everything is hanging now on the status of forces agreement. For a president who doesn't pick up the phone and speak with our, our ally in the region is really shocking. More on that tomorrow.